This is Tobacco Dock in the East End of London, and for one glorious weekend, it's been taken over by Bike Shed, the showcase for the UK's new wave custom bike scene. Earlier today, I met up with the guys from Spirit of the 70s and Red Max to take a look at their latest creations, but the beauty of this scene is that anyone can do it. So if you're thinking about having a go, where should you start? Dave Sutton built these two beauties in his spare time. If you've got one bit of advice for someone who is thinking about doing this and building their yeah. own special, what would that be? Do it. Just get on and do it. Just learn as you go along. The first one might not be as good as you wanted it to be, but the second one will. The real fun of it for me is the actual building itself or getting on the lathe and creating something and then having starting from a block of metal and then finding you've put something on there and all of a sudden it comes together and you think, well, I've just made that. Dave's been customising his bikes for years, but what's it like for a total novice? Lee June's stunning Yamaha Roadster shows just what you can do. My first build, um, I was out shopping with my wife and happened to spot a magazine with the Spirit of the 70s front cover on it of an XS 750 triple. Realised I had one in the garage, um, so went home, got the angle grinder out and, uh, and popped out of the garage a couple of months later. God, was that it? So did you have any experience of building no. anything like this before? No. no, none whatsoever. Is it a work in progress or do you think, I'm done there, I'm going to move on now? Um, there are a number of things I still want to do to it, but um, there's been a bit of interest in the show, so I'll, I'll let it go as it is, maybe. All right, um, so you might have even sold it here. Quite possibly, yeah. yeah well, there so. you go, man. So look, right, if you've got an old wrecker in the garage and you've got an angle grinder... You can do anything. What's not to lose? This new custom bike scene has now grown so big that it's even got someone to document it. Mary Minchow, the photographer who produced these fantastic black and white images. We went to a bike jumble about uh, two years ago and uh, we saw a load of boys, turn up boys, in their lovely jackets, you know, 59, and they had these lovely old bikes and we were like, oh, straight up to them. I was like, I want to come and photograph you. Turns out it was a brother, uh, actually two brothers and the dad and they all rode bikes they live like they're living in the 50s went up there I spent a whole day with them riding and shooting them and that was kind of the outcome of, was that series called the Ton Up. Here a lot of people think this is a new vibe but actually people no. have been bobbing and customising. It's been going on forever. Forever. Forever in all these little back street garages forever you know dads and sons building really cool stuff together. You know, you can create some amazing friendships and, and, and build some really cool stuff that you can't go and buy in a shop. Some bikers from the older generation may not approve of all this. Taking an angle grinder to a classic bike for them could be sacrilege. What does Dutch say to his critics? People sort of talk about this scene as being a little bit like punk rock. It's about breaking the rules, doing things you shouldn't do, mixing and matching sounds and fashions and styles. And I think that's what this scene's doing with bikes. But all that generation that should understand that, they're the ones that go, oh, you shouldn't do that, I don't like this. Why's that guy got a back tire on the front that won't go around corners? Those brakes are rubbish. I mean, come on, you've turned into your dads. Get over it. And on that note, I think I'll move on.